Hello and welcome to The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about, where we share positive stories about issues that matter and campaigns that make a difference. I'm Tom York and this is Rooftop TV. So our first story this week is about how the UK charity sector is coming together to stand up against hate speech online. Here with the story, I'm pleased to welcome Sarah Colombini, one of our writers here at The Rooftop. Hi, Sarah. Thanks, Tom. Facebook policies for addressing hate speech are under increasing scrutiny, with big businesses like Coca-Cola, Starbucks and Unilever boycotting advertising on the platform. This week, 37 UK-based charities have joined forces to tackle hate speech on social media, and in particular, Facebook. Among the signatories is Social Enterprise PR and Communications Agency Campaign Collective, which funds the rooftop. The charities issue a joint statement saying, we believe that it is time for social media platforms to do better and do better by the people who use them. It's time for them to take action to make their platforms more inclusive, a place for connecting and debate, not hate. Hate, whether it's based on race, gender, sexuality, disability, religious beliefs or any other characteristic is not acceptable in society. And we all have a part to play in stopping its spread. It's important that Facebook and other social media owners hear this message loud and clear from as many people and sectors as possible. Campaign Collective and The Rooftop welcome this joint effort by charities to look at how the ethics of social media advertising can be improved. While we continue to use Facebook to ensure we continue to share good news worth shouting about, we will not be spending any money promoting our posts. Thanks, Sarah. Great to see the charity sector coming together on such an important issue. Now, for our next story, we're focusing on mental health. This is a topic we've featured quite a lot during the lockdown, especially since a study published by the London School of Economics revealed that mental well-being is at an all-time low as people continue to navigate their way through, through the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, I'm pleased to welcome to the show today, Johnny Benjamin, who is a mental health campaigner, writer and filmmaker. Johnny has launched a new charity called Beyond, which is committed to making a difference to the mental health of young people up and down the UK. Hi, Johnny, and welcome to The Rooftop. Hi, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad, thank you. Yeah. So what is Beyond and what inspired you to set up the charity? I mean, I guess I set it up because, uh, well, for many reasons, I think firstly, because of my own, my own personal experience of, of mental illness, which, well, m my own issues began really young. Um, so my parents took me to a psychologist for the first time when I was five. So, you know, really young, but it was never addressed properly. Um, I became really, really unwell in my teenage years, really unwell. I got put into a psychiatric hospital. Uh, I attempted suicide. So I, it took me, it took me, I'm 33 now. And, um, well, it's pretty much taken me 20, 25 years to kind of, yeah, sort my, sort my mental health out. It's still an ongoing thing, but you know, it took me like a long time, a long, much longer than it should have done to yeah, get the help, the support, the tools that I needed. And um, it's the same for so many young people that we talk to, can't get the help they need, don't know where to turn. Um, the long waiting list is such a long waiting list for, for help and support. And I, I, I mean, even more so now because of the, the pandemic and, you know, I'm, I'm really concerned about kind of the long term impact of the pandemic we're all focusing on the you know our physical health which I get you know of course but you know what about our mental health and the mental health of our young people as well so we set the charity up essentially to put help and support in place early on uh, for young people rather than the, the waiting and the waiting and the waiting and uh, the delays um, it's so it's so common that people have to reach crisis point you know when it comes to, to, to mental ill health before they before they actually get the help and support they need. So basically, we, we set ourselves up as a grant giving organization because 
over the past few years have traveled around uh the uk and, and the world as well actually doing doing work in mental health and i mean it's the same story wherever i've gone it's like uh f funding is cut funding is lost and again particularly for young people's mental health i mean the amount of times i've seen amazing charities like local small charities and organizations that say to me oh we've had our funding stopped funding cut and we can't treat young people anymore so our organization is all about yeah putting uh funds back into particularly the smaller local uh, mental health charities organizations that so often just get overlooked they're doing great work there's so many amazing uh, i'm sure as you know there's so many amazing amazing charities out there but particularly smaller smaller maybe local charities that are just yeah they just get get completely overlooked and so we're about putting funding back into those organizations charities and also we're about being a, a bit of a, a voice a platform for young people we've got a, a youth boards so lots of amazing young people who are involved and galvanized and you know uh want to make a difference so going into schools and colleges and universities and um into society really yeah to try and um kind of boost the you know youth youth voice when it comes to, to mental health which is it's really needed it sounds like you're doing a lot of work there I know there are three charities that you've recently given grants to. Could you tell us about those? So the charities that we're funding, um, a lot of them are quite creative in their approaches to treatment. Um, so we, we, we recently funded a um, charity called Hector's House, which very much focuses on uh, things like music therapy, which I think is really powerful. Um, there's another one called uh, the Teapot Trust that we've just funded as well. Um, which is all about uh, art, artwork, getting young people to explore their emotions and their, their thoughts via, via art, creativity. Um, yeah, I just find um, like uh, art, creativity, music, I mean, it's really powerful mediums when it comes to, you know, a, a, as an outlet for, for people's mental health. And, um, you know, when it comes to kind of traditional forms of treatment that are available via the health service often those things are yeah overlooked so we're really yeah we're really looking at alternatives you know that young people can really engage with what are the biggest changes that you would like to see in the the mental health space in the uk oh there's so much so much change is, is needed and what really frustrates me is that funding isn't ring fenced for mental health so yeah definitely better better funding, more secure funding, um, you know, when it comes to young people's mental health, I mean, you know, we're really trying to do a lot of work in schools in particular, it needs to start in schools, you know, after this sort of period, well, during this period, this pandemic, um, and, and going into sort of, you know, the next school year, um, things have to change, we can't just go back to the way they were. Um, young people have so much pressure um you know things like exams social media and it's just not being addressed in fact it's getting worse and so um you know i go to i work in a lot of schools and some schools you know they can't afford to have a counselor or a therapist or you know anyone any any mental health support and um it's always that again it's always the first thing to go whenever i go into schools and they say oh we have to make cuts we got rid of our school counselor it's so frustrating it's really frustrating um so i'd love to see more of a emphasis on on mental health in 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 our schools it's not it's not a, it's not a wish that it has it just has to happen especially after this period we can't just go back to to the way things were so yeah more more emphasis uh in schools in colleges in in universities and just well, throughout society really you know um things things really need to change now how can people find out more about Beyond and then support what, what you're doing? Yeah, so um, so if you go to our website, we are beyond.org.uk. And um, yeah, I mean, there's various ways, I guess, to get involved. If you're a young person, you know, uh, become part of our youth board or um, yeah, you can become active in, 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 in many different ways. Um, if you're, you know, looking for funding, of course, you can come to us as well. 
um, or you know, fundraising. Yeah, there's there's lots of different ways to to, to get involved. That's fantastic, and I know you're on social media too, um, doing quite a lot of campaigning there to engage young people. Well, thanks, Johnny, for joining us. We wish you all the best, and we look forward to following Beyond's work. Thanks very much. Thank you. Now, for something a little bit different, Sarah has a story about how a charity has been supporting new dog owners to help settle their pets into their new homes. Sarah. Thanks, Tom. Animal welfare charity Dogs Trust has supported thousands of new dog owners to help their pets settle in their new homes during lockdown, thanks to players of People's Postcode Lottery. They launched a post adoption support initiative in April 2018, which was designed to support new dog owners in the crucial days and weeks after an adoption. With funding from the People's Postcode Lottery, the post adoption support service could move online during lockdown. Dogs Trust are able to speak to all new dog owners and identify any potential behavioural or veterinary problems the dogs might be having in the early days of settling into their new home. Helps cement the bond between the owner and their new dog and promote mental and physical well-being for both. Dogs Trust rehoming centres are still closed to walk-in members of the public, but the charity is now rehoming dogs through the new handover at home and appointments process. Valuable work by the Dogs Trust there. Well, that's all we've got time for this week. You can find out more about today's stories and all the other positive news this week on our website, therooftop.news, and on Facebook and Instagram at News From The Rooftop, and of course on Twitter at News From Rooftop. And as always, if you've got a story that you want to shout from the rooftop about, email it to us at editor at therooftop.news. I'm Tom York, and this is The Rooftop, the home of good news worth shouting about. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you next time.